they hurt me You'd find out what made me angry Then use it to your ability Now you're trying to avoid me You're the big problem here A bully to many for so many years Now shut your mouth, close your ears Never learned your lesson and nobody cares That's what you're here for This is Fantasy Ask and welcome back to The Sims 4 Royal Witch Kingdoms. Today we are continuing with the royal family of Sikar. Our High King Luther has been in a very good mood of late because as we have seen over the past couple of episodes, his perfect family is finally coming together, something that he has always wanted since he was a young boy. I mean, growing up, he didn't even have a uh, a father, you know. So I think as well as wanting a complete family, he's always wanted to give his own kids something that he himself never had. I mean, either he was without a father or he was without a mother and things just, you know, or without an uncle. Something always has been going wrong in his life. He's never kind of lived with a complete family in a single span of time. So that's what he is building with his wife, Queen Samara, and they seem to be in a good place with each other, and I hope that continues. But we've had a lot of guests in and out of the palace right now. A bunch of our Sims, you know, they're checking in with the nobles, they're checking in with other royals, trying to make friends, trying to build relationships, so we're going to continue doing some of that in this episode. And also, Samara is in his second trimester, so we'll definitely be seeing um, their baby born in this episode as well, but let's quickly go over what we saw in the mini movie Basically, we started off um, On a very romantic scene with Luther and Samara by the pool during the day and uh, they were essentially Having like a really lovey-dovey moment and Samara I think being unused to 
um, this much affection. She was kind of trying to reason out why Lutha is, you know, giving us so much love. And Lutha was just saying that this child they're about to have truly is a blessing. And he was thanking Samara for giving him the perfect family he's always wanted. And then we skip to a new scene inside the palace um, where we have the kind of like makeshift nursery or where the babies are typically born like the birth chamber the birth hall I don't know where we have the bassinets and stuff and they were kind of just looking at where you know their future baby is going to be and Samara I think was getting a little bit nervous about motherhood because I don't know if she had the best example of a mother growing up. I mean, her mother wasn't a terrible person. She was a good witch, as far as I remember. I think that was Lady Amatrice. But her mother was always kind of like giving in to their overly controlling father. And even though their mother knew what was right most of the time, she didn't stand up for herself and she didn't stand up for her kids. So a lot of that has been built into kind of Samara's mind frame as to how, you know, a mother should be an act, like you defend your children within a certain kind of um, boundary or a limit. And especially if it's against your husband, you don't go, you know, above and beyond that because the the husband is, you know, the person or the, the high kind of lord is the person who makes the decisions at the end of the day. And you don't confront the master of the house. Um, so that's kind of what she's been used to. And then when her brother took over and her brother got married, her sister-in-law didn't want any kids. So she didn't really have much to do with motherhood at all. She kind of just had the baby, but it was mainly Samara who was looking after the baby. So I guess in a lot of ways, you could say Samara's already had some, some training and, you know, she's probably... Um, being a better witch than most of the other females that she's come across regarding this but even so all of this stuff that she has seen maybe subconsciously is in her mind and it's making her doubt now that she's getting you know a little bit further along in her pregnancy but then Luther came in and he was like we're in this together we're gonna both do well don't worry about a single thing my love and I thought that was so cute of him um, and then we had a final scene uh, with Hellicent, who came over to visit Samara, and they were lying outside, kind of looking at the clouds and talking to each other. And Samara was saying, thank you for coming to visit me in your condition. I never thought both, you know, of us would be pregnant at the same time, because Hellicent is also expecting um, a baby right now. Um, and then Hellicent said, well, I didn't think I was going to have another child at all. Um, and then I think Samara got a little bit concerned and she said, well, this was your choice, right? Or did Vlara force you? Like, did my brother force you to have this second child? And Hellison said, no, not this time. This time I need this child. Um, so basically she confirmed that it was her decision, which, you know, we've been speculating in the past episode or two. Um, and she said that you were sorely missed, Samara. So I think the decision for her to have this child was because um, now that Samara's gone, everything is kind of on Hellison's head. But not only that, Eldrick is getting up there in age. And right now, Samara, not Samara, Hellison, yes, yeah, she still isn't an elder, so she's a bit younger. Maybe she can physically deal with taking care of everything. But once Eldrick is passed on and their child, Becerra, their firstborn, becomes the High Lady, um, amateur, I mean, not amateur, geez, I'm getting the names confused. Hellicent, if she's the only other person in the house, um, and, you know, she's an elder, she's gonna have to serve her own daughter. And given Hellicent's personality and the way she is, she really does not want to do that, especially not in her old age. So she feels as though she needs this second child so that this second child can be the one to serve Becerra. Like, she doesn't want to have to do all of that in her old age. Um, and especially if this baby, by the time Becerra becomes the High Lady, even if this baby's a child, you know, it's going to help with little things around the house. And then when it's a teenager, I mean, we're going to have that entire period where she's not going to be able to be married off um, if she is married off at all. I mean, for Samara, it was a long time before, you know, she 
had a wedding and before she got sent off to the royal family of Sikar. For most of her life, she's been single and we kind of all thought she would be a spinster forever. So yeah, that's kind of where Hellicent is at. So now we are picking up um, during Samara's second trimester. We have a bunch of guests at the house. In fact, Lion has been wanting to stargaze with Elrond for so long. Um, so we are finally going to get around to doing that. He also wants to like scream incoherently because what? He's afraid of the dark? Oh my goodness. Okay, Lion, let's go. And he's friends with Elrond, so that's good. But let's go and um, stargaze with Elrond. If possible, come on, let's go. Let's, uh, are we, are we stargazing? I don't know if we're stargazing. Let's stargaze with him. You've been wanting to for a, for a while now, so let's finally get around to it. Okay, these guys, oh look at them. They get along, which is good. Now, I don't remember if there is, I mean, they're, they're at this point, you know, they're both widows. So I suppose if they wanted to, they could actually get into a relationship. They could. Um, they wouldn't be able to get married or anything. Um, but they could still have this odd kind of thing between them. Or they might just be friends. Maybe we're reading too much into it. Maybe they're just friends. Um, and they're bonded because, you know, they're, they're both widows. So, okay. Get them to do that. And then Luther over here is so sweet. He is constantly checking in on Samara to make sure she's okay. He wants to ask her about... Um, her day, like if she's feeling fine, if everything is to her liking today, so that's really nice. He's really caring and considerate, and that makes me so happy. But okay, come on, we want to ask Samara how she's doing. I know you're dancing, and are you also chatting with Samara and everyone else, but let's ask, um, I mean, sorry, you're chatting with um, Zara, who's been invited, but let's ask... Samara, how she's doing, if she's okay. There we go. Look at him being all attentive. And then Samara, she wants to become friends with uh, Queen Zara, so she's gonna go ahead and do that. She's terrified because she's scared of the dark. And oh yeah, we recently had a fire, so she's like extra freaked out and a bit panicked. But Let's let's try and chat with this this queen. Um, I think now that Samara is a queen, like she's reaching out to a few other monarchs in the kingdom and kind of getting comfortable with her royal title. So she's making Zara feel welcome. I think it's also another thing: the fact that she grew up in an outcast family makes Samara a little bit more aware of like how she maybe treats other people. And right now, among all the royals, the royal family of Ioja, they're kind of outcasted. Like, yes, everyone is still cordial with them, but everyone suspects them of being underhanded and, you know, assassinating people. Um, so I think Samara, she's trying to break past that, break through that prejudice that everyone has against the Iojas, and from one queen to another, make... Um, Zara feel a little bit more welcome, which is very nice of her, in all honesty. That is very nice of her. And maybe she feels as though Zara is the least intimidating queen to befriend. I mean, we only have one other queen right now. We have Nalcosi. We have the high queen of Nalcosi, and you know, she's a high queen, so maybe that's a bit too scary. Whereas, um, someone who's a queen just like Samara, that might be a nice, nice kind of friend ship to develop. Okay, we'll give her a heartfelt compliment. We'll ask about her day. We'll go ahead and talk about the sunny weather, because why not? Gossip a little bit. People like bonding over gossip, I suppose. Compliment her outfit. It is quite cold. Um, discuss interests, and then just go away. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, um, do an impression. Let's see. Okay, so it's taking a bit of work. 
I think maybe because Samara herself is a bit of a loner. Let's complain about the cold. So it's definitely taking her a bit of effort to do this, but, you know, she wants to, which is quite nice. Okay, nice. She's managed to befriend Zara, which is pretty cool. Now I have to keep an eye on their hunger. And she is, like, getting very hungry. So let's come here and eat some fish. Let's eat some fish. And every let's just get everyone to eat some fish. Everyone have food. Let's go have food. Yeah, let's go do that. Have you managed to? I think he's already managed to stargaze with um, Elrond. Yep. Okay. Let's have our dinner. There we go. Is everyone going out to eat? Yeah, everyone's going out to eat. That's nice. Look at them. Everyone's eating as a family. Oh, that's cute. We've got Padme and Lion who are friends with each other. And then we've got husband and wife over here having a really nice dinner with one another. Oh, that's so sweet. That is actually really sweet. Okay, well, I am going to pick up again when Samara is in her third and final trimester, and we'll see how things go for her then. Queen Samara is in her third trimester, and she, as well as Luther, are looking pretty gloomy right now because they received word that one of their nobles have recently passed away from old age, and that was Lady Calypso Siddeley. Now, the one person who is not upset about Calypso's demise is King Lion, because he has been disliking, for some reason, which I do not remember, he has been disliking Calypso for the longest time. And look at him with his, like, wine. What are you doing, my boy? <laughs> He's, like, in the tub with his wine. But, yeah, um, he is not happy. He's not happy. Jeez, what am I saying? Happy? He's not sad. He is not sad that Calypso has died. He's happy because Calypso um, was so disliked that he actually, um, like off camera within this episode, he summoned her to the palace along with pretty much all the other nobles. And then he went on to insult her in front of everyone and uh, decided to declare her his enemy. And so now that she's died, he's, he's pretty happy about that, which I feel like is, is uh, quite dark. But uh, Lion, you surprise me sometimes, my boy. You definitely surprise me. Now Luther, look, Luther's upset. Do you guys remember why Lion does not like Calypso? I'm sure I've said something. Was he the one trying to flirt with um, Lord Marquis and um, that's why he didn't like Calypso because Calypso is like the wife of Marquis? I don't remember. I don't remember when this escalated this much, but flippin' it, it did. It did. But okay, Samara over here wants to ask um, High King Luther about his day. So she's also slowly becoming like more and more considerate of Luther. Um, you know what? I feel like all the support has been giving her throughout this time in her life, now, which is, you know, all very new to her, is probably something she immensely appreciates. So she is trying to show that um, to him as well, that yes, she does appreciate him and that she does care about him. Which is very, very sweet. Okay, there we go. She's asking his day, checking in on him as well. And then Padme over here had like a really, really adorable whim as well. She wants to become friends with Queen Samara. So it, I know we were a bit worried in the previous episode, like how Padme would react to Samara joining the family because these blue-skinned Sakaas are always on their high horse. But it seems as though, uh, you know, as the last kind of blue-skinned Sikar in this kingdom, or actually at all, we don't have any blue skinned Sikars anymore. 
Um, she's decided to accept Samara into the family. In fact, she wants to befriend Samara. So she's gonna come here. She's gonna ask about the baby's due date. She is going to ask to feel the baby. I mean, obviously she is gonna be this child's great aunt, I believe. So she'd be very much excited about um, the arrival of this child. And you know what? I feel as though because Samara kind of succeeded in carrying on the Sika bloodline, um, like through Lutha, Padme is impressed with her. And Padme has decided that, you know what? She is doing exactly what she needs to. And she's giving this family exactly what it deserves. So... Oh, have they managed to become friends? Oh, that makes me so happy. That makes me so happy. You know, actually, Padme, I feel like we have this idea of her as a blue-skinned Sikar, um, based on, like, all the other members of her family. Um, I feel like we have this idea that she's a bit critical and she's difficult to get along with. But if you think about it, even when Lion married into the family, Padme was actually very nice to Lion and very welcoming, even though he wasn't a royal. He was from a noble family in Holcane. And now, um, same situation with Samara, she's from a noble family in Nalkosi, what used to be Holcane, and Padme's, you know, welcomed her in. I mean, maybe not, she wasn't mean to her, I feel, at all. But it, it took her a while to warm up, but she has definitely made up her mind and welcomed Samara into the family. I feel like she's one of those people that kind of look scarier than they actually are. Like, they're actually usually quite nice. Okay, uh, and what do you want? Chat with Lady Valena. Okay. Oh, Emmerich. Emmerich's, like, sending a note to his uncle to support the fact that his uncle became enemies with Lady Calypso. She's dead, though. You don't have to be that mean about her now. But okay, Valena, uh, let's invite your friend over so you can spend some time. Actually, actually, actually. She's she's sleepy. She keeps... actually. <laughs> she is sleepy. She keeps wanting to go to sleep. I do realize that. You probably shouldn't keep her up, in all honesty. But let's uh, send her to bed. I feel like it's kind of mean to keep her awake <laughs> right now. She's like really tired and she just wants to go to sleep. That's fine. His sleep schedule is like so off compared to everyone else. I wonder why. She must have woken up in the middle of the night and had a nightmare or something. Um, but yeah, she's she's going to heave herself up the stairs and she's going to go to bed. Because she's exhausted. Let everyone else deal with, you know, the, the social games of the day. She's tired. She doesn't have time for all. Okay, Padme, you, honey, I feel like should probably practice some magic. Like, if you have time to read, um, you have time to practice magic. And in fact, I feel like that's one of the things I struggle with. I keep forgetting to get my Sims to practice magic, especially because it's something that you can't do while doing something else, like socializing. They're entirely focused on just that. So what I've tried to do now is that I've aligned it with like an autonomous action. So whenever the Sims are picking up a book to read, I just interpret that as them wanting to study magic. And so I get them. Oh, this is dangerous. Luther, Luther, do not be throwing darts at Padme's face, please. Do not be throwing darts at Oh my god, see look, that fell. That fell, and you better be glad that fell. This feels risky. Oh my goodness! Did you just throw that through her head? Lutha. Lutha, that was mean. Don't act like that to your to your aunt, okay? Don't be mean to your Nara like that. That won't do. I see you reading though. That means you want to do some magic. So let's practice some magic. Let's do some mischief. And he wants to become friends with Lion. Aren't you already friends with Lion? You are. What are you on about? You're friends with your Uncle Lion. You guys get along, like, so well. And Lion, how's he doing? Is he, He's just dancing. Lion's just dancing. He's like, I just want to have a good time. Oh, Lion. You are so funny. 
Okay, well, these guys, they're busy practicing magic with one another. I suppose that, you know, studying together and bonding. Oh, that's adorable. That's just adorable. It really is. But doesn't Padme look mean? She looks kind of mean, doesn't she? I feel like she does. Is it a beauty? I can't tell. It's a blue Sakaar thing. They just look really judgmental and mean, but I, I suppose not every. Well, Padme's the exception. Every Sakaar in history, every blue-skinned Sakaar in history, has actually been mean and judgmental. It is just the Sakaar way of doing things. Um, Elrond is the same way. Feyna was the same way. Luna... I feel like Luna was maybe a bit more subdued, actually. Luna was more like Padme. But their mother, um, Nala was that way, their father Yorick was that way. So, you know, it's uh, not that far off of a thing to, to imagine. But okay, um, I think, guys, at this point, um, we're gonna pick up when this baby is born. Um, because Samara is in a third trimester, so I think we will catch up when this baby joins the household and we'll kind of see how everyone kind of feels about this new baby arriving. Okay, I know I said we would come in when Samara has had the baby, but like I couldn't just skip this. So this is gonna be somewhere in between there. But Valena, Valena, Lion's sister-in-law, his Najime, has just written a note to him, maybe a letter, saying that she's been thinking about expanding the family by trying for a baby. Guys, guys, she's the one who has like five flippin' kids. How many children does she have? Wait, it's Hedorian, it's her, and then they have Emric, and then they have Soren, and then they have, uh, what's the younger boy's name? Oh my goodness, I Harold? They have Harold, and then they have Marina, do they do they have another child maybe i think they have they have four children right do they have four children or do they have five children i swear they have like a lot more children than i feel like you should be able to have um but they have a ton of kids essentially i think they might have four they have tons she wants another one like are you serious woman are you serious I guess she wants another one. But we're gonna encourage that. Why wouldn't we? Most pairs are brilliant. So, oh my goodness, look at these guys. Try for that baby. Oh my goodness. How many, let's check the family tree. We cannot, this cannot go ignored. How many kids do they have? I swear, because they have the most amount of kids in any witch family. And I thought they surpassed the Sikars, which back in the day the Sikars had four. So I thought maybe they have, they have five. They have five. They have, oh, that's right. They have two daughters. Completely forgot about this. They have five kids. They want a sixth. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so in order of birth, is this an order of birth? Is this actually an order? I think, I don't know. Is it? It's not. I don't think it is. It's not. Because they have, Emmerich's the oldest. He was the firstborn. Then they had Soren. Then they had Harold. Then they had um, Marina. Was it the other way around? I don't know. They had one of these two at some point. And then they had Anora. Anora is the youngest, I think. And now they want a sixth. Dorian! Dorian's an old man. Give him a break. Give him a break. Oh my goodness, these guys. I mean, fine. Have more children if you want. I suppose, you know what it is? I think Valena and Dorian are having like all of the kids they're supposed to have, and then all of the kids that Lion was supposed to have, but never ended up having. Um, but there we go, in case we were needing more children in in the Witch Kingdoms, we have, we have more babies on the way. But, you know who really needs babies? Eoja needs babies, because they only have flippin' three children in their kingdom. They need to catch up with Nalkosi, like, come on, come on guys after a long wait for our red-skinned Sikar royals we finally have the birth of a baby boy by the name of high prince lucian Sikar. but not only that 
Now, Samara has thankfully survived this childbirth. So thank goodness. She's got a 3% chance of dying, and she rolled a 10, which was kind of close, but she survived. And not only with this beautiful baby boy, but this baby boy's younger brother by the name of Prince Ren Sika. And not only Prince Ren Sika, but their younger sister, Princess Cove Sika. That's right, guys. Samara had flippin' triplets. Triplets! I was like, mind blown. I was like, okay, yay, we got a prince, which I was very excited about because I've been wanting to use the name Lucian for a long time. And then there was another baby. And I was like, wait, what? We had twins? And then there was another baby. And I was like, okay, we have triplets? So Samara, she waited so long before getting married and having kids. But when she did, she did it with a bang, guys. Quite literally. She did it with a bang. We have three royal babies. And they might not look it in the game right now, but they do look it in their portrait panels. These are all red-skinned babies. Um, so she truly has, by surviving and, you know, having three kids in one go, given Luther the perfect family that he was hoping for. And actually, like, more than that, he... he I don't think he had hoped for something as amazing as this. Like, they literally have a complete family. Even their kids will have siblings, and that's another thing that I feel like might be important for Luther, is for his kids to not grow up feeling alone. Because he was an only child, and he was always, like, bouncing around from place to place. Um, and yes, he had a half-sister for a little bit, but, you know, then he, she got assassinated, so he's never really had siblings. Um, and I feel like he would want for his kids to grow up in a busy household, feeling loved and never alone. And Samara gave him that, which is so, so adorable. So all these babies are going to be red-skinned. Obviously, we don't know their hair color until they age up into toddlers, like if they inherited from their father or from their mother. But uh, I can tell you that Lucien, High Prince Lucien in the middle here, and his youngest sister, Princess Cove, they both have inherited Luther's pink eyes, and then their middle brother, Prince Ren, he's inherited Samara's dark blue eyes. So we have a little bit of variety among the children. How amazing would it be if Lucien had the red hair? Like that's been, like the red skin, pink eyes and red hair has literally been continuing since the time of Vex. So that would be amazing. But I am so happy and so excited for these guys. Like, oh my goodness. But before we continue, I do want to give um, credits to the guys who suggested um, these lovely names to me. So Lucien was suggested by Kamal McCree 2616. So thank you so much for that lovely name suggestion. Um, Ren was suggested to me by Raylan's studio, so thank you so much for that suggestion. And finally, Cove was suggested to me by Camelux Camelux. So again, thank you guys for your amazing suggestions. These royal babies have joined our Sakaar household, and this is amazing, isn't it? Like, the entire Sakaar household is like a red skin now. We've literally got five red skin members of the Sakaar family. <gasps> ah, this is, I'm just... I'm speechless. I am literally speechless right now because of how unexpected this whole thing was. Um, and with the little baby Cove, she, um, like her genetics, she's kind of inherited a 6% chance to die from childbirth, which is like 3% higher than her mother Samara, but still relatively low because, you know, this was a, a healthy birth. Um, so that's all fine and well. But... My goodness, you guys. Go feed the High Prince. Feed the High Prince. And I think Luth over here, he would want to coo at his children. And I feel like Lion would want to coo. He'd want to bounce, like, the new baby that has been born. Like, babies. Oh my goodness. This is wild. We have not had triplets in um, any of the royal families ever. So this is like really cool. And I kind of love the fact, let me just put 
um, autonomy back on. But I kind of love the fact that Lutha is continuing like the Sika kind of tradition of having huge families. Faina, unfortunately, um, couldn't succeed with that, but Lutha has. He already, I feel like, is being such a capable high king. Like, he was definitely the right person to adopt as an heir. He came in, um, you know, he's been having decent relationship with everyone in the family, uh, relationships with people within their court and kingdom. There was a fire early in his reign, or was it during his wedding? Oh my goodness, children are hungry. Early in his reign, um, but that, that didn't matter. Let's feed the babies over here. He like put out the fire, he's like, no, our wedding is, I think it was during their wedding party, he's like, our wedding party is not going to be cursed, um, none of that. He put out that fire, and he managed to have triplets. I mean, his wife did, but you know, it was a team effort. <laughs> it was a team effort. This is amazing. It's like something that Samara did, but it's growing his prestige. So, oh my goodness, this family just got really kooky and crazy but I'm really excited for like where this is gonna go. Really excited, okay, let's change the baby's dirty diaper. I'm also very excited to see how these kids are gonna grow up, what kind of personalities they're gonna have, especially because they have each other. Very much like the Ramadusts. That was the only family we've ever had triplets with, um, the Ramadusts, and they were all girls. Uh, in this instance, we have two boys and a girl, but, um, we saw with that family, two of the siblings, like the younger the younger ones, triplets, were quite close to each other. Um, and the older sister was usually by herself. And then as they got older, like, I feel like their friendships kind of rearranged themselves. The older sister ended up becoming close to the other two. And then the younger sisters grew far apart from each other. So I wonder how the dynamic is going to work with these guys. And it's just going to be so cool having like an entire red-skinned family. <sighs> Amazing. Just amazing. Okay, look at him. He's happy. Even Padme's here. She's like looking at all these babies that are born. She's probably really excited that, you know, the Sikha bloodline is secure and that they are safe now. They don't have to worry about dying out, which I feel like would have been the most traumatic thing for a member of the Sikha family is having your bloodline die out. That would be like, what? Now, Yorick. I don't know how Yorick would have felt about having um, red skin descendants because we know for the very first um, High King and Queen of Sikar, for them, blue skin was beauty and blue skin was perfection. And you know, the entire, entire family, like all the kids were blue skinned. Um, and now we have all these like red skinned monarchs and babies. So I don't know how he would feel about it, but you know what? He's not around right now. So we don't have to worry about him. Let's see, okay, he's sleeping, he's exhausted, makes sense. Samara, come and sleep here. I don't know where you are, come upstairs. No, honey, honey, go sleep upstairs. You did like a huge thing. You did a huge thing, you need some, you need some right and proper rest. And let's see, lion, what's wrong with the baby? Baby being upset, lion's gonna get up. He's like, I am going to tend to my grandchild to my grandson actually this is also a good time to reintroduce a new witch word which is asielen asielen means um grandchild literally it's gender neutral means grandchild what's happening here padme's like the baby she's freaking out oh my goodness padme did you see that did you guys see that I was going to send Lion to like tend to the High Prince and then <laughs> who do we see running like crazy to go tend to the baby? Literally Padme. She was freaking out. She's like, oh my god, the High Prince is crying. Oh my goodness. Padme, you are such an extra great aunt. I love her. I really do love her. But okay, you I feel like everyone's just tired. Everyone's tired. Just go to bed. Just, just go to bed. You should probably also go to bed. I mean, we woke you up because the babies needed attention, but they're fine right now. And I cannot remember for the life of me what I was going on about. Feel like it was something, but it's kind of escaped me at present. 
Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But seriously, what was I going on about? Like, I can't even... Baby needs tending. Samara, time for you to get up and be all motherly. Come on, let's go tend to the little baby. Let's go tend to the little one, Samara. Come on, let go. Let go. Let's go see how the, the young one is doing. It's definitely going to be hard to deal with three babies. And actually, um, I am like recording ahead a few videos. So when we go into March, we probably won't see like some of the babies born around this time. Or at least the March videos are probably not going to have the new infant life state. Which I'm low-key terrified about. But, um... Maybe, like, end of March or even... Not even end of March, actually. I think we probably won't start seeing infants on the channel. Like, in my Vampire Amazon or even in Royal Witch Kingdoms. Until April. Just because I'm ahead on my recording schedule. So, I'm not, like... I'm not playing... <laughs> When these babies aren't being born when infants are in the game yet. Uh, and I think they're coming out, what, March 12th? So probably April is going to be when you guys start seeing infants, if anything, on the channel. But okay, honey, I'm so sorry. I woke you up. You can go You can go to bed. Just, just, go, just go to bed. Go rest up. You go do that. Let's rest up a little bit. There we go. There we go. But yeah, I have no clue what I was going on about, guys, at all. But I am super, super excited to have all of our young ones. And not gonna lie, I'm also excited to be jumping to the next household. Because you guys know me. I cannot deal with this amount of babies. And I also cannot deal with these amount of, um, like, this amount of toddlers. I remember the Ramadas family being so crazy. Um, and it was low-key hell to play with them, even though it was so cute to have a bunch of adorable triplets running around the place. So we'll have to see how things work out um, with these guys. Hopefully they're a little bit older by the time I get back to them. But we should, you know, be seeing them hopefully around the world as we play with the other families. And we're all going to be sticking in Sika for a bit. So... When we come back, we're going to be with the noble family of Sisida. So this is going to be Daphne and Daphne's daughter, we'll see. Um, and then Daphne also should be in contact with Valena because Valena is literally her sister-in-law as well. So that'll be interesting. But okay, guys, with that said and done, I'm going to leave off. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.